It's March 10, 2014. I'd like to call the regular Common Council meeting in order. Uh, leading us in the pledge tonight is Girl Scout Troop 229. I'd like to welcome Candace Bedford, Sadie Miller, Megan Williams, Aaliyah Ford, Alexandra Ostrom, Lindley Ennis, and Hannah Good. Ladies, the flag's over here, and whenever you're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Clayton. Great job. Thank you. No cookies? No, Stanley, no cookies. <coughs> Only if you bought them. But well, we know that didn't happen. <laughs> I'll buy a box of sherm with you, Robbie. I'd like to ask uh, wow. Mike Conklin, our youth, uh, to report on uh, the next two weeks and what's been going on in our schools and with our youth. Thank you. At the Port Jarvis High School, congratulations to both Dan DiCarlo and Dylan Booth, who both participated in 2014 New York State Wrestling Championships. Both wrestlers did a great job representing Port Jervis. Dan led Section 9 with a third place finish. This is the second time Dan has placed in the New York State tournament. <coughs> he took fifth place last year. Great job to both Dan, Dan and Dylan. Congratulations to all the Odyssey of the Mind teams for the great performances. Teams did a great job and brought home many awards. ASK and HP had great Dr. Sue celebrations all of last week. March 25th, kindergarten registration will take place at HP from 3.30 to 5. The next school board meeting will be held on March 18th at the high school. The 8th annual Port Jervis Rec Department Cops vs. Kids basketball game took place last Saturday. It was a huge success. The 6th grade kids had a victory over the cops and there were a lot of non-parish programs collected for local needs. Happening at Power and Port Jervis, March 11th, April 8th, and May 6th at 4 p.m. Literacy Orange presents a family literacy gathering. And reading and writing fun for four and five year old children. They will both be great opportunities. And finally, Shalali the Reading Dog at the Port Jervis Free Library next Saturday from 1 to 3. Thank you. Great, thanks, Michael. I appreciate it. Um, giving our first senior report tonight is going to be um, Mr. Siegel, but he is giving the report of Mrs. D.G. Anamasa. Thank you, Mayor. Port Jervis Senior Club. The Port Jervis Senior Club is starting out the new year with a gung-ho attitude. We are actively involved in planning some spring and summer events. Joan Wagner has been busy gathering information on some tentative upcoming bus trips to the Villa Rome in Milford, Air Hearts in Wampaw Pack, Woodlock Pines in Holy, Pennsylvania for a show and dinner. These trips are usually well attended by the members. Over several years, the city has provided the seniors with a lovely space at the Farnham Building, an Ulster place, which provides a kitchen, dining area, and living room for our needs. Intentions are to use the space for a movie night, covered dish dinners, sing-alongs, a suitable exercise program geared for seniors, guest speakers, bingo, card games, checkers and chess, and anything else that would interest our members. We are always open to other suggestions. At the next meeting on March 12th, there will be a sign up for members only to partake in a corned beef and cabbage dinner on March 17th. <clears throat> Excuse me. Interest is high and hopefully this will be a very successful, enjoyable time for our members. At our last meeting, Debbie Jackson, representing the Port Jervis City School District, graciously invited any senior to attend this year's high school play, Footloose, at no cost. The play will be March 30th <coughs> at 2 p.m. at the Port Jervis High School Auditorium. Take advantage of this opportunity to support our local students and staff on all their hard work. Any senior 60 years or older are welcome to become a member of the Port Jervis Senior Club. Meetings are held every second and fourth Wednesday of the month at 1.30 at the Farnham House on Ulster Place. Refreshments are provided by our members after each meeting. There is a yearly membership fee of $10 due at registration. If you have any questions, contact Judy Gray at 856-8827.
Again, that's Judy Gray at 856-8827. We encourage any senior to sign up. You'll be glad you did. Sue D. Giannamasso, the PR person. Thank you, man. Thank, thank you, you sir. sir. I appreciate it. And thank you, Mr. DG, if you're out there watching. Um, before we move into public comment, uh, Mr. John Fernandez, if you remember him from last year, RC Racing, I would like to make a quick presentation to the uh, council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, council members. Uh, I submitted a proposal, submitting a proposal to the city, uh, being that this will be into our second year now with the RC. Last year was a big success. Getting started, we had a, uh, about four good events and uh, otherwise was club races on the weekends. On our big events, we, we, we probably are uh, looking at about 80 people, 80 racers coming, and we're expecting a lot more this year, actually expecting people from, uh, believe it or not, overseas coming over for some events that we're planning. Uh, a signature race for the city of Port Jervis will be held on May 31st, June 1st. That'll be our yearly signature race here. Uh, tightening up on what we're gonna call it and all, but that's gonna be every track in the country will do one big signature race. That will be ours every year from now on, and we'll go from there. Um, just as our proposal, everything's written in there that I put in there, really no reason to read it again, except for the fact that I put a lot of uh, hard-earned money and time and sweat into this track, and uh, it's, it's turning out to be uh, what we expected, uh, probably more than what I expected. So I appreciate the uh, city's uh, consideration on letting us continue just to do this on a yearly basis and, and uh, showing you that we appreciate and everything is written, in, written written inside of it to tell you pretty much what we propose. Um, if you'd like to share that with them later, go from there, Mr. Mayor. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, hopefully that's good. And thank you very much. Yeah, we'll discuss it uh, amongst the council and I'll be giving inf information to Corporation Council, uh, Mr. Bobozo. Okay, okay, I guess we're set and thank you very much for uh, hearing us. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Um, next is our public comment. Uh, anybody that would like to speak has a five minute limit. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to say a few words. Hearing none, uh, can I have an approval of the minutes of the last meeting? I have a second. motion by Mr. Ritchie, a second by Mr. Cunningham. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Uh, committee reports, finance and insurance. Mr. Bell. Thank you, Mayor. We have a couple of bills to pay. We have Social Security for February, $41,430 and one penny. And the capital fund equipment for the fire department, $26,250.73. The totals from general fund, $49,605.64. From the water fund, $9,587.16. From the capital fund, $33,712.76. Total expenditures, $92,905.56. I'll make a motion we pay those bills. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Bell to pay the bills, a second by Mr. Wallagrowski. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. I have a request from the Senior Citizens Club of Port Jervis for $625 out of the Ruggieri Fund. And uh, I'll make a motion that we allow them to draw that out of their fund. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Bell, a second by Mr. Hendrick, uh, to remove money from the Ruggieri Fund for the seniors. Discussion? This is the trip to Woodlock Pines. Woodlock Pines, thank you. Uh, any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. I have a warrant for the collection of 2014 city tax for the city of Fort Jervis. State of New York, County of Orange, City of Fort Jervis. To Robin Weisnager, City Clerk Treasurer. You are hereby commanded to collect from the several named persons in the tax roll annexed here to the several sums stated in the last column thereof, opposite their respective names, a total of $4,553,067.21. For the 2014 city current budget and any other unpaid assessments as may be noted in the said city tax rule beginning on March 17, 2014. You are hereby required to receive and collect from each of the said persons, companies, corporations, and associations one half of the total taxes as listed opposite their respective names without penalties or interest up to 
April 30th, 2014, as required pursuant to section C6-17 of the city charter as amended, and if any such first installment or first one half payment of such total taxes remains unpaid May 1st, 2014, you are required to collect an additional 6% 6% of such first installment. During the month of June 2014, you are required to receive and collect from each of the said persons, companies, corporations, and associations the second one half of such taxes as appear opposite their respective names without penalty or interest added thereto and of such second installment or second one half remains unpaid after July 1st, 2014, you are required to collect an addition thereto, 6% of said installment. Payment of such second half or second installment shall not be made by any person, company, corporation, or association until the first installment of said taxes has been paid together with any penalty or interest due thereon. You are authorized to receive the second installment of said taxes set forth opposite the names of any persons, company, corporation, or association at the time when the first installment is paid or any time thereafter. All such taxes remaining unpaid after July 1st, 2014 shall bear and you are required to collect thereon in addition to the said 6% per percentum interest rate of 1% per, per month from the second day of July 2013. And witness thereof, the Common Council of the City of Port Jervis has caused this warrant to be signed by the mayor of said city and corporate seal of the City of Port Jervis, New York, to be affixed hereunto at the City of Port Jervis, New York, this 10th day of March 2014. Uh, I'll make a motion we allow the mayor to sign this order. I have a motion by Mr. Bell. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Ritchie. Discussion? I have so, Mayor. Thank you, sir. All right. Our city tax base collections will be four million five hundred twenty seven thousand dollars twenty seven thousand nine dollars and thirty six cents. Old backs are one thousand two hundred eighteen and thirty three cents. Unpaid municipal bills. And this is the one I wanted to explain. $24,839.52. That's the fees that have been attached to the tax bills for having to mow lawns and shovel snow that remains unpaid for the year of 2013. $24,839.52. Which brings us to the total in the resolution, $4,553,067.21. That's all I have on that now. Any other further discussion? Just uh, so that the public understands that we have to send out our DPW out to, to clean the snow of uh, residents that don't clean their snow or mow the grass when the grass gets too high. We do attach a bill and eventually if a house is sold or the, the taxes are paid, we gather that money. But in the meantime, we have to go out and do it and it costs each of our taxpayers that money to be able to uh, have those clean sidewalks and, and the grass. So, Mayor, it, yes, I'm sorry. 51. 50, 51 pieces, pieces of property in February. Um, no, just, just remember that when you see our, our DPW people out there uh, cleaning off, quote unquote, a, a neighbor who's not around their, their sidewalks or, or, the, um, or the grass is being mowed by the DPW, it is being done on a, on a court order so that we can get that money back in tax, in, in tax money, but no guarantees of when we'll get that money back. And it's and it's a real burden on on the uh, on the city. Any other further discussion? Hearing none. Um, uh, we have the motion. The second. Uh, I'll approve. Aye. 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 Uh, against. And uh, it's passed. Aye, when, when our next uh, finance meeting will be next Monday, the seventeenth, <coughs> following uh, DCW and fire and emergency management meetings. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Fire and Emergency Management, Mr. Wagrowski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for the month of January and February, I have the total calls. Uh, for the month of January, there were 32 total calls, and for the month of February, there was 29. At this time, the, uh, some correspondence from Dick True has requested that the below named firefighters be approved as probationary drivers, emergency drivers, for the company stated below. 
Aaron Omick, Excelsior Engine Company number five, James Fuller Jr., Excelsior Engine Company number five. Now, all the proper paperwork has been attached. And with that being said, I'd like to make a motion we accept that. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Wallagrowski, a second by Mr. Siegel to approve those uh, recommendations. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? So carry. Also, I have uh, another letter from Kip <coughs> Drew. Dear Mayor Decker, members of the City Council, is hereby requested that the below named members of the Fort Travis Fire Department and Company stated be removed from the active membership rolls effective this date. Tim Schaff, never sink into company number one, the reason, personal reasons, and William Marion, Tri State's host company number six, 72 year member, deceased February 15, 2014. I make a motion that these na names be uh, deleted and uh, Mr. M uh, William Marion. Um, be deleted with regret. I have a motion by Mr. Wadrowski, a second by Mr. Bell. In discussion, uh, I belong to sixes as does Mr. Bell and uh, 72 years as a member of a volunteer fire department. He was our oldest member, uh, long time serving and uh, regrets to his family. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Also that the uh, Requested that the below name firefighter be approved for inter-department transfer as stated. Matthew Gawley, a transfer from Howard and Howard Wheat Engine Number Four to Delaware Engine Company Number Two. Um, he has met all the requirements from Howard Wheat and Engine Two. I respectfully submitted a picture. I make a motion to accept that transfer. I have a motion by Mr. Wallagrowski, a second by Mr. Cunningham for the transfer. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. And the only other thing I have is the next fire emergency management meeting will be uh, March uh, <coughs> March 17th at 7, no, yeah, March 17th at 7 p.m. or 6.30, so it would be following the DPW, so maybe 7 o'clock. Whenever we have it, right? <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Wadgross. Thank you. Uh, code and Legislative, Mr. Siegel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Code and Legislative next meeting is scheduled for April the 2nd at 7 p.m. Got right, that right out of the way. Right here in the council chambers. And the code agendas and minutes are on the city webpage, portjervisny.org, for those people who are interested in what's happened and what's going to happen. Again, that's portjervisny.org. That's all I have, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Did you have, I'm sorry, Mr. Siegel, did you have a motion there? No, but I could, I could add on if you'd like. Uh, no, that's all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Public Works and Environmental Affairs, Mr. Cunningham. Thank you, Mayor. A little update right now on our DPW department. Garbage and recycling are on their normal schedule for the next two weeks. Our city DPW crews continue removing snow from narrow, narrow and, and highly trafficked city streets. DPW crews are filling potholes at this time throughout the city. Most important, the total rebuilding of the Beach Road sewer pump station is now complete and it is online and operational with an expected 30-year lifespan. And that is my report, Mayor. Oh, one other thing. Our next DPW meeting will be on March 17th at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Uh, police Committee, Mr. Hendrick. Thank you, Mayor. Everyone should be in receipt of the police report for the month of February 2014, and I motion to accept this report at this time. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Hendrick, a second by Mr. Ritchie, to approve the... Uh, what is that, the Marches? No, February. February's. Um, and it's the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. The Port Jervis Police Department held their annual traffic traffic safety awards and annual review for 2013. The department award committee consisting of members representing all ranks within the department performs an annual review of the enforcement activities, major incidents, investigations and arrests, responses to medical emergency and public service. Referrals of exceptional acts and service are made to the awards committee and then referred to Chief Warden for presentation to the selected award recipients. The department's traffic safety program is modeled after the New York State Association of Police Chiefs program. The patrol lieutenant reviews the yearly reports and presents his findings to the police chief. 
The types of traffic infractions that are analyzed include aggressive driving, speeding, failure to yield to pedestrians in a crosswalk, and distracted driving behavior such as texting while driving. These statistics are then used to evaluate the patrol officer's commitment to traffic, traffic safety. The department awarded the top five officers in the department for their outstanding commitment to the traffic safety, which greatly increases pedestrian motor vehicle safety. First place was awarded to Officer Miglianico, who was issued a gold award and certificate. Second place was awarded to Detective Kevin Moscatella, who was issued a silver award and a certificate. Third place was awarded to Officer Card, who was issued a bronze award and a certificate. Fourth place was awarded to Officer Wachowski, who received a certificate of recognition for his efforts. And fifth place was awarded to Officer Conklin, who also received a certificate of re recognition for his efforts. All recipients received letters in their personnel files. The annual review by the Department Awards Committee awarded the following letters of combinations for excellent police and investigative duty. January 15, 2013 response, investigation and arrest of a suspect for murder in the second degree. Detective Sergeant Myers, Sergeant Angeloni, Detective Warden, and Officers O'Connell and Krentz. February 21, 2013 response, investigation and arrest of three suspects involved in a residential house burglary. Sergeant Angeloni, Officer Riley and Decker. October 14, 2013 investigation and subsequent apprehensions of three suspects charged with burglarizing Sam and Mabel's sports shop and stealing a large quantity of pistols. Detective Sergeant Myers, Detectives Warden and Muscatella. November 12, 2013 investigation of a domestic disturbance in West End section of Port Jervis where the suspect struck and injured an officer with a motor vehicle, fled the scene and intentionally struck and damaged two police vehicles before being apprehended in the state of Pennsylvania for felony assault on a police officer and felony counts of reckless endangerment. The injured officer is fully recovered. Uh, those awards went to officers Riley, Egan, and O'Donnell. December 21st, 2013, narcotics and weapons arrest. Officers recovered a quantity of heroin, two pistols, and a rifle while investigating an overdose located on Ball Street. Officers Decker, Santini, Conklin, Migliatico, and Detective Sergeant Myers. Good job on all those uh, incidents to all those officers. And the Shooters' Cup. The 2014 Department Shooters' Cup was awarded to Officer Jeffrey Legato. The Shooter's Cup is awarded to a police officer who demonstrates excellence in department firearms qualifications and training during the department's ongoing uh, qualifications and tactical training program. And the next police committee meeting is Monday, April 7th at 6.30 p.m. in the council chamber. That's all I have on that there. Thank you, sir. Isn't Officer Legato still, uh, isn't he the uh, firearms instructor? Yeah, so good. We have a good firearms instructor for getting the top shooters award. That's good. A liaison, CDA, IDA, Mr. Henry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Community Development Agency met on February 26 and reorganized as follows. I was elected chairman, Richard Roberts, vice chairman, John Russell, treasurer, and Betsy Gardner, secretary. There will be a special meeting of the CDA tomorrow, Tuesday, March 10th, mm -hmm. 7 p.m. at the rec center, second floor. The agenda includes an executive session for the person of personnel contractual. And the next regular meeting of the CDA is Wednesday, April 23rd, 7 p.m. at Pike Street Rec Center, second floor. And that's all I have, Mayor. <coughs> tomorrow's the 11th. Huh? Yeah, tomorrow's a special meeting. And the then, oh. Uh, Not the 10th. Oh, it's today, 10th, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for keeping me straight on that. <laughs> Tomorrow, Tuesday, at 7 p.m. in the rec center. Must be nice to be retired. Mr. Hendrick, ADA. <laughs> uh, ADA met last month. Uh, the oath of office was administered to three new members. Old business included uh, Mr. Lopez giving a brief history of the committee, which included items on the reassessment survey, and he stated he would make copies of said survey for current committee members. Uh, new business ADA committee members request following change to the code regarding uh, shoveling the sidewalks. Member asked the committee to compile info for submission to the code committee. 
to see if we can get the minimum width widened to accommodate wheelchairs. Uh, currently, it's 24 uh, inches wide that needs to be shoveled. Uh, recommendation was uh, 28 inches wide. This led to discussion uh, with regards to the minimum of it being three feet wide, and it's reasonable to change the code to read three foot path, and that was referred to the code committee at their meeting. Mr. Lopez suggested committee members submit any new projects or issues for consideration and development of a new list for 2014 work. It was noted that the ADA committee usually has budgeted funds of 4,000 per year. Scheduling the next meeting will be towards the end of April and a date will be announced at a later council meeting. And that's all I have there. Thank you, Mr. Hendrick. Uh, Mr. Siegel, Housing Authority. I uh, thank you, Mayor. The last meeting was February 19th. It was just business as normal. The next meeting is March 19th at 7 p.m. Hillside Terrace. And that's all I have for the Housing Authority, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Mr. Walograski, Recreation Commission. Thank you, Mayor. Everybody received a copy by email, uh, the Director of Recreation Report for the month of February. At this time, I'd like to make a motion that we accept uh, Mr. Fagioni's report. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Walograski, a second by Mr. Bell for the, to make a motion for the February report to be passed. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So carried. Also, at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the Recreation Committee minutes from the month of February as well. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Walograski, a second by Mr. Bell for the recreation minutes for February. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. The Recreation Department finished up its winter basketball program with three special events the last two weeks. On Saturday, March 1st, we held our skills competition day and awards ceremony. Then on March 5th, we held the final of the fifth and sixth grade basketball league. And finally, on Saturday, March 8th, we held the 8th Annual Tom Trucker and Cops and Kids Basketball Game. All the events were held at the ASK Gym. A special thanks goes out to the Port of School District, custodial staff for all their help. The pictures and results are on the Recreation Department Facebook page. The Youth Center remains very busy as we head into spring. After school night programs are averaging 30 students per day, and our Friday night teen night program is averaging more than 60 students every Friday. Spring Port Pride Day is scheduled for Saturday, March 22nd, 2014 from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the City Playgrounds. That's if all the snow goes away. This is our yearly spring cleanup event. Volunteers are needed. Please check with your recreation office over the next week for possible cancellations due to the snow still on the ground. The summer recreation programs, special events, and field trips are currently being scheduled. Our full summer recreation flyer will be ready by early May. The contact information for the Port Jervis Recreation is as follows. The phone number is 845-858-4045. You can email them at email, excuse me, at pjrec at frontiernet.net or visit us on Facebook at Port Jervis Recreation. Finally, the next Recreation Commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March 19th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wolgowski. Uh, tourism, Mr. Bobozo. Uh, the Tourism Board has not met since our last council meeting, however, um, planning continues regarding the citywide yard sale, which will be taking place on May 3rd, with a rain date of May 4th, which is the first weekend in May. It's a great opportunity for everybody to get out and see what the city has to offer, so everybody should be getting uh, anything that they hope to be uh, selling ready, and everybody should uh, be checking their closets for a good pair of walking shoes so they can get around the city. Um, the next Tourism Board meeting is tomorrow, March 11th at 6.30, in this building in the basement conference room. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, zoning Board, Mr. Bruce. Thank you, Mayor. The Zoning Board was scheduled to meet March 4th, but that meeting was canceled, so our next scheduled meeting will be April 1st. <coughs> That's all I have on zoning. <coughs> planning, sir? Uh, planning Board meeting was held on February 25th. I'd like to thank Mr. Oney for filling in for me that particular night. Uh, there was a public hearing for Sahara Realty. Uh, Mr. John Fuller, who represented the applicant, was requesting an extension on the public hearing. And the reason uh, currently has an application uh, for the parcel before the zoning board for parking variance and wishes to wait on, for the final decision. Uh, there was one question raised regarding that uh, property uh, for delivery pattern, and the chairman at that time said he will discuss that during the next meeting. There was a pre
increase emission for Dunkin' Donuts, uh, lot line change and site development to allow 12 additional parking spaces and new exit. Uh, Mr. Henderson, representing Mr. Fuller and the applicant requested public hearing. The adjacent property owner agreed to commit 20 feet of his property to be incorporated for the purpose of the expansion. And this will require a lot line change. A motion was made at that time to set the public hearing for March 18th. Um, also, uh, March 18th is our next planning board meeting, and also added to that is uh, the Ruby Group, and there'll be a site development um, for four uh, commercial spaces on the first floor, and six apartments on floors two and three, and for those of you who don't know what that site is, that's the old Woolworth building, and that's all I have, man. Thank you. What was that date again, sir? March 18th. Thank you. Uh, planning board, or excuse me, plumbing and electrical boards, Mr. Siegel. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, plumbing board uh, met on the 5th, and there was one application for a test which was approved. Um, code's report was that they're doing their best with one man down, and the next meeting is April 2nd at 6.30. Electrical uh, also met on the 5th. Um, there was a fine of one electrician that operated in the city with no license. Uh, and that next meeting is also on April 2nd at 645. That's all I have to report. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Senior advisory, Mr. Siegel. Senior advisory. Um, I met with the senior housing representatives and residents during the month at all three facilities and at the Farnham House several times. I also like to note that there are several Apartments available at Waters Edge. If anybody's interested, please contact Kathy Bunce at uh, Waters Edge, which is at 208 East Main Street. And that's that. And I like to thank uh, Sudiji for the senior report. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. No access 23, right? That was last week. Or two weeks. Oh, yeah, they do the second right. meeting of the month. Okay. Oh, wait, I do have a report, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I was going to do this under uh, old business, but probably now would be more appropriate. Uh, they'd like to apologize for not having the signal out in the last two meetings. It wasn't Louis's fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. Access 23. Something happened to the signal when it left here. The signal has to go to Wordsboro, get converted to digital. Something in that process didn't work, so no digital signal was sent back. Um, Access 23, George Belcher got involved in to help us out here, um, contacted Time Warner, and um, they resolved the problem, and I see we're on the air. So, um, stand show. The stand <laughs> show, yeah. So all those people that missed me, I hear you. Um, so we should wow. be good. I'm sure they're both happy. <laughs> <laughs> both his grandkids. <laughs> and, um, and um, I want to make everybody aware that Time Warner is selling out to Comcast. Um, let's pray nights that things get better. Um, and, and if we could, um, under executive session, uh, do contractual cable contract. Gotcha. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Under Mayor's Correspondence and Information Update, um, some of the things that I had written down uh, that, that um, Mike Conklin talked about was Dan DiCarlo had placed third in Port Jervis resident up in the fourth ward, uh, placed third in the state finals uh, for wrestling, so congratulations, congratulations to him. There were three teams with Odyssey of the Mind through elementary and high school, and uh, two placed second place, one placed third. Uh, Dr. Seuss, we had a few readers here. I know I read, and I think you read, Mr. Siegel, you read? At ASK? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Mr. Provozo, you went too, right? Thank you for doing that. Um, Keeping Country Strong is back on the air, and uh, I had the, the pleasure of making a visit there, and uh, it was Irish night, and I see there's at least three Irishmen wearing green tonight, uh, since we won't have a meeting until after, after the 17th. Excuse but, me, Mayor, but I was informed today that you sang. I did sing. I didn't know you sang. <laughs> I was pressured into it because I guess my father did it, so. <laughs> That's what they told you, huh? <laughs> That's what I was told. Um, 
I just wanted to let the public know that I, I, I asked my council members to uh, set up board meetings um, in the month of April for here in the council room, so I know that they're working on that, and we'll make sure we get the information out to you. Uh, we'd like to hear uh, what you have to say, if there's any suggestions that you have, any complaints that you have. Uh, I know a lot of people hit us up on Facebook and, and send emails, but you know, seeing people face to face and, and, and hopefully uh, uh, getting the information out there helps in these word meetings. So uh, you'll be hearing about word meetings hopefully in the month of April. Uh, and again, we'll have them here. And I'm going to talk to them about shut-ins. Uh, people who can't get out to meetings here that, to make sure that we uh, maybe have something up at Water's Edge uh, and the other, uh, the other places so that those people can also have the opportunity to talk to the representatives. Uh, it's that time of year again for the Soapbox Derby uh, Scholarship Dinner. This, this year is the 80s. Um, some people like to forget the 80s, but they apparently said, hey, dress with your, uh, with your leg warmers on and come out. You don't have to dress up. It is Saturday, March 22nd at the Erie Trackside at 6 p.m. to midnight. Uh, it is $65 a person, and there's dinner, dancing. Uh, there will be a, a silent and a live auction there. There will be lots of music and lots of fun. Uh, I've gone to all of them, and, and the nice thing is is they give a scholarship, a, a few thousand dollar scholarships uh, to area students. And with that said, uh, this Saturday we not only had the Cops versus Kids, which I think uh, Lieutenant, the, the cops fell short again this year, didn't they? I believe they did. <laughs> Our police force needs to get in some shape. I mean, they've lost every year to these poor kids. And um, and we had the grand opening at Papa Grumpy's, and uh, and I, I want to give kudos to the uh, Business Professional Women's Club, who had the tricky tray for the uh, Stars for Tomorrow, who give out thousands and thousands of dollars in, in, in scholarships. 15,000 uh, last year. 13,000 last 15. year to both, De how much? 15,000 15, to both um, Delaware Valley and uh, Port Jervis High School students and it's well deserved and I didn't see Mrs. Durian in the back there. I know she's involved with the BPW and, and you guys did a fantastic job. There was definitely standing room only and I think you sold out all, all your tickets, correct? All of them. All of them. That's great. Um, I do have a letter here from the Tri-State Chamber of Commerce uh, for the City of Port Jervis 2014 Summer Street Fair featuring the 16th Annual Arts Walk. And that is scheduled for Saturday, July 19, 2014 with a rain date of Sunday, July 20th, 2014. And uh, can I get a motion to approve that function? So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Bovozo. I have a second by Mr. Ritchie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. I also received a request today uh, for the Home and Garden Show being held at the Delaware Valley High School the weekend of April 12th and 13th and they hang two banners as they do every year um, and they have attached here their insurance uh, so if somebody would like to make a motion on that. So moved. Second. Mo motion by Mr. Siegel, a second by Mr. Cunningham. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So Carrie, um, we had a, a we had a presentation by Rupco. Uh, this is that Green Jobs Green New York program that has uh, partnered up with NYSERDA and that will do evaluations on homes to see what is needed um, as far as uh, fixing of your house. Um, for most people, it will be a free program for the assessment. And for some, we'll even get grant money. But it's a great program, even if you don't qualify for the grant money, that if there's an improvement made to your home, that NYSERDA will help assist in your um, Orange and Rockland bill, which you'll continue to pay the same amount, but you'll pay off what it is um, as far as the improvement goes. Like if you get a new roof, new siding, new windows, it's, it's all about the weather stuff. But uh, gentlemen, I sent out to you the uh, resolution and um, if uh, I don't have any anybody that you know, disagrees with this, can I get a motion to uh, approve to partner with Nice uh, with Rupco in this endeavor? So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Siegel. A second by Mr. Hendrick. Discussion. 
Good program. Yeah, and, yeah. and what what will happen, it, it won't be people coming out and just knocking on your door. They're, they're actually going to team up with us. So you're either going to see somebody, whether it's an employee from the city or somebody from the local government, one of your representatives or myself, uh, will actually go out with them and, and work with them. So it won't be somebody on, on their own uh, knocking on your door and, and talking to you about uh, um, you know, the improvements that you can have made on your house. I did call. I didn't call the vote, right? Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? So carried. Thank you. Um, I would like to make an appointment to the ADA committee. Um, the appointment is Miss Melissa Decker, and uh, she has already, I believe, came came to your first meeting. She has been on the board before, and she showed interest again. So uh, I, I would like to make that appointment. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cunningham moves, second by Mr. Bavozo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. All right, and I got some bad news. Letter dated March 5th, 2014. Uh, this is a retirement notification. I am writing this letter to notify you of my retirement as the chief water plant operator of the city of Port Jervis water filtration plant, effective June 27th, 2014. My last day at work will be May 16th, 2014. I'm sure we can make the transition as smooth and as seamless as possible. Please, possible. Please let me know if I can be of further assistance to you. It has been a pleasure, a challenge, and a great learning experience serving the city of Port Jervis in this capacity for the past 22 years. Sincerely, Kevin Keene, Chief Water Plant Operator. Um, just so you know, uh, he has uh, vacation time saved up, and that's why he'll be leaving Mark, uh, May 16th, but his actual retirement will be June 27th. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, just making no bad news for the city, but good news for Mr. Mr. Keene. So yeah, that's true. That's good, news. Good, good luck on your retirement. Yeah. Yeah. And this Absolutely. is the this is the same thing. Bad news for the city, but but good news for for the family. Uh, March 6, 2014, Mayor Kelly Decker and the Common Council members, I wish to take a moment to advise you and the City of Common Council, City Common Council that after 21 years as the City Director of Public Works, I will be retiring. This will be effective on or about April 26, 2014. These years have afforded me the satisfaction of planning and overseeing many infrastructure projects throughout the city. Having come from the private sector, one of my most difficult obstacles to overcome was the revitalization that large-scale local government infrastructure projects do happen, but not over, or do not happen overnight. It's hard to understand what takes the project's approval process so long to allow a municipality to move forward with a project. With that being said, when we finally do get the green light to move forward with the project, they move quickly and on schedule. To our mayor and councilmen, I could never understate to you how extremely fortunate you are to have such diversity of skilled people in your Department of Public Works. Their proficiency in many different disciplines have saved city taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars throughout the years, and I feel proud to have led this team. I will fondly remember these years spent as Director of Public Works. I'm excited to begin this new chapter in my life. I look forward to the opportunity of spending time with my wife of 44 years, my children and grandchildren. Once again, thank you for the opportunity to serve. Respectfully, Vince Lopez. Vince, thank you. Sadly. If we vote no, we can't I'm just going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm making a motion. We don't accept so, the letter. So, so I need first a motion with regret for Mr. Keene. So move. I have second. a motion by Mr. Cunningham, a second by Mr. Bell. Discussion? All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carry. And then I need a motion on Mr. Lopez. I'll make the motion. motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Wallagrowski, second by Mr. Cunningham. Discussion? We need to check in with his wife and see how she feels about it. It's going to be truly missed. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I will tell you, in, in, in my last three months in the seat here, uh, a valuable, valuable asset that the city is losing. And, uh, and hopefully his replacement will be able to step in and try to fill those big shoes. But, uh, but it's going to be difficult. Thank you, Vince. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
So carried. That is all I have for the uh, mayor's report, my city clerk treasurer's report. In the city clerk treasurer's office, you will note that this evening we kept the payment of bills extremely low for this first meeting of the Common Council, and that is because the tax bills come out on March 15th. So that's when my cash flow gears up again. So, um, as I've said before, um, actually, um, it's normally March 15th that we begin collections. Because it is a weekend, we actually begin collections on March 17th, which would be St. Patrick's Day. Um, but that is what is happening in our office as well as just preparation for our annual internal audits. Thank you, Mayor. All business, Mr. Siegel. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, let me talk about Save a Lot. And I want to remind the people that Save a Lot provides free delivery to seniors and disabled customers. In order to take advantage of the free delivery, you need to contact the manager, Nancy Getz, directly and put the order in through her, and she delivers it quite promptly. She also asked me to remind people that it's a crime to take shopping carts home. Shopping carts are very expensive. There are several people roaming town trying to find them. That we can't find them all. Um, they're really not meant to take home to collect leaves and to um, move from apartment to apartment to really to use in the store to get your food. Um, if in fact you do take a cart home, it would be really nice if you brought it back. We found some carts buried in the snow, found some carts, one cart actually in, in Westfall at the tunnel going under 84. Um, really if you, if, if you need help getting it home, I'm sure that help could be provided from the store. Um, I'm still obtaining more information on voice broadcasting. I had a call from two places uh, over the weekend and today. Um, there seems to be a way we can do it by the minute. And you can do a lot of calls in a minute. Uh, it may be very economical. Um, the lady at Simply something, I forgot the name of it going to call me back again tomorrow and we're going to do a test run and it could be done two ways with them as well as Nixel but Nixel isn't getting back to me you can you can have a database and you can have the computers speak the words or you can speak the words yourself um, we won't use it that often over the phone so uh, I think it's, I think it's more personable if we make oh absolutely yeah and, and somebody else's voice than yeah a computer yeah and us um, but but I think that that in the end it's going to be um, economical for us to do thank you um, talked about the signal well, I guess that's it <laughs> yeah. will, Mr. Mr. Ronio, all business no mayor <laughs> Mr. Ritchie no mayor thank you Mr. Hendrick nothing mayor Mr. Barbosa nothing mayor Mr. Cunningham nothing mayor Mr. Walgrowski. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, the DPW uh, men, uh, the director. Uh, I had sent Vince an email last week on some good sized potholes. Um, some people had asked me about getting them filled. I know for a fact they were filled by 8 o'clock <coughs> the next morning, by 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Unfortunately, because of the water, they were blown out again. Okay, people need to understand. Yes, they could film in the morning. They're going to blow out because of all the water gets in there. But they have been, I mean, I've heard and I've seen the DPW guys have been out there. People just need to understand with the thaw, refreeze, thaw, refreeze, these potholes are going to stay there. Sometimes they're going to get larger. They're doing their best to keep up with them. Um, and I just want to thank them. A lot of people think that, well, no, they're not getting done. But yes, they are. I know for a fact because I saw the ones. As soon as they were done, a couple hours later, they blow out because of the uh, uh, water getting in them. It's unfortunate. People have to wait another two months, you know, maybe three months, depending on the weather now, before they can get hot stuff in there. But it's unfortunate, and it's everywhere. So you're just going to have to be careful and watch where you drive. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Old business, Mr. Bell? No old business, man. New business, Mr. Bell. New business. Uh, 
there was an email sent by uh, our city clerk treasurer today with uh, all the projected raises and all the different types of insurance. And uh, the bottom line of it was that municipalities may be expecting as much as a 25% raise in their insurance rates. And I think that's just disastrous. It's, it's ridiculous. And we uh, and our claims are way down. Exactly. Normal. Time, exactly. To, time to shop around. So uh, actually, right that right. was only workman's comp insurance right. that was detailed. Our general liability should stay steady. Uh, but the workman's comp is going up. So. And that's from the state. That's from the state. Right. That's all. That's right. We that's shop Thank you, sir. For all the insurance. But you can't shop for that. That's the state. <laughs> Uh, new business, Mr. Wallagross. Nothing, thank you. New business, Mr. Cunningham? Uh, yes. Regarding the uh, upcoming work of clarification project at our filtration plant, I would like to make a motion to have the mayor sign amendment number one to GHD Consulting Engineers for upgrades of the turbidity data collecting systems required by the New York State Department of Health. These, along with other various minor changes, or an increase in cost of $6,000. The additional cost will be funded by the existing contingency clause in the contract. I have a motion, motion uh, second. by Mr. Cunningham, second by Mr. Oney. This is for the amendment number two to GHA consultant engineers. Amend, amendment number one. Oh, I'm sorry, amendment number one. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Proposal in the business. Our youth advisor, young Mr. Conklin, also has a, uh, another role on the mock trial team for Port Jervis High School. Um, they will be competing the first two rounds this Saturday at BOCES from 9 to 3. So if uh, anyone would like to come out and see uh, how great a coach I am, um, but more so how diligent and, uh, and hardworking these kids are, um, uh, please feel free to come and support the team. Um, this year is actually a pretty interesting case. It's about fracking, which of course is a big issue in New York State. Um, and it's kind of fun to see, uh, see the kids have to navigate um, not just the technical aspects, but the legal aspects as well. So uh, please feel free to come and uh, support the team. And as to all the sappy stuff that everybody will be saying to Vince, I'm going to uh, reserve doing that till closer to his actual retirement date. That's it. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hendrick, new business. Uh, I have some matters for executive session, uh, motion for litigation <coughs> with regard to properties and invite Ms. Thurier and uh, Bill Bavoso for litigation, unpaid water charges, Ms. Wazenegger, the third personnel retirement and replacement, and lastly contractual uh, that Mr. Sigal requested for cable. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Hendrick, second by Mr. Wallagrowski for executive session, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Anything more? That's it. Mr. Ritchie? Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to thank uh, our Director, DPW Director Vince Lopez. Um, I know uh, the time that I served on the council, any time I had a question or I asked him to look into something for me, it was very prompt, as Mr. Wallagrowski said with uh, other matters with the city, so he'll be deeply missed, and, and I wish Kevin uh, Keene a lot of happy retirement, and most of all, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody, uh, a little early, but uh, we won't have a meeting uh, before that, so um, wish everybody happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. The top of the morning, right? Yeah, yeah. we can get ready. Mr. Oney? Uh, no new business, Mayor. And Mr. Siegel? Yeah, not much, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'd like to express our condolences to the Hosking and Culver families on the passing of past chief Dick Hosking's wife, Fran. She passed away the other, other day. Um, they were a great couple and, and served the community well, and our condolences go out to that, to their families. Also, Frank and I would like to announce the fourth ward. We'd like to schedule the fourth ward neighborhood watch. I'm sorry, the neighborhood board meeting on April 8th, and we'll ask Don if he would reschedule his fourth ward neighborhood watch for the same day. We can hold them both here at the same time. Thank you. I think that might be doable. That's April the 8th, 
at 7 p.m. And just like to tell everybody that if you haven't been on 84 trying to get from Matamoros to New Jersey uh, or the uh, a little bit sometimes the other way, but especially from Adam Morris to, to ShopRite, um, it's already becoming difficult at certain hours of the day. You might want to look up and see how far the traffic is and go around through Port Jervis. And we welcome that traffic to come in and stop at our restaurants and our flower shops and places such as that. So um, just be cautious. And um, I guess I'll do it later, but I'll also do it now. I'd like to congratulate Vince on, on his retirement. And, and, and I'll do it again later, and I'll use some of the words that my wife uses about him. Pleasant, charming, things like that. Um, and Kevin Keene, too. Uh, both of those guys are an absolute pleasure to work with. You always get a prompt answer, and you get a real answer. So. Um, We'll say more as it goes on, but congratulations, friends. Just don't over, don't over schedule yourself. And um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir, and thank you for scheduling that board meeting. If you could just make sure that Cody gets an email to that so that he's yeah, able. Thanks to. for making the rest of us look no. bad. Uh, first, <laughs> first, first ward has theirs set to for really? April 30th. Sure has oh, Jerry, Jerry, I forgot about ours. You already <laughs> sent yours in? Ours, yeah, the 23rd. If All we right. can. Okay. 23rd at 7 o'clock. We'll check with Debbie, see if she can uh, uh, rearrange some more. That sounds good. I too. went last year. You had every opportunity in the world to beat me. I was <laughs> waiting for Rob to bring it up. I forgot yeah. it. It's on top of my sheet. Pub public comment. Uh, anyone from the public would like to speak? Uh, three minute time limit. Please just uh, say your name and the ward that you live in, please. Hi, I caught the tail end of the conversation regarding the plowing and opening up the roads and everything like that. And I know that our roads will eventually get to. But anyway, I would like to make a suggestion that when you have the smaller, less traveled roads, such as mine, and we have a, a flurry of two and three minute visitors on a particular house number, um, could we have like temporary no parking at all until the road is open? Because basically those that, um, there's only one house that does not have a driveway. Everybody else has a driveway. So, and that would definitely help us out. The other day I was leaving my street and one of these brief visitors was pulling in and I had to crash into the snowbank in order to avoid a head -on. So I was, and I was genuflected by that person afterwards and all. And uh, we also have one abandoned house on our street and there's another one that was just cleared out of the other day. And I know that the one abandoned house, um, the people working for the bank who came in to clean it up Said that the pipes were frozen and broken in the house. So, and I heard that the other house that is recently um, vacated, I, I had heard through one of my other neighbors on the street who had spoken to the person who lives there, they said that sewage water had backed up into that house, and I guess they never bothered to report it at all. So, I just wanted to let you know about that as well, too. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Mark has. Uh We'll take that to the police committee meeting on your first request and the other one. Um, Mr. Cunningham, if you could just follow up on that as far as uh, water main, sewer breaks. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the public? Hearing none, uh, motion for executive session. Second. Motion by Mr. Rebozo, a second by Mr. Uh, Hendrick. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried.